Ой, у лузі червона калина. Окей, я тут, я думаю, на Мирослава Скорка стріт. Я не знаю, як робити do these Slavic pronunciations, they're pretty hard. <laughs> as I was saying in my last video, I think uh, Ukraine would really benefit from having English as a second language to integrate foreign workforce, you know, to, uh, you know, to rebuild the place. I mean, uh, they have so many nice buildings here and they all need renovation even, even before the war. Um, you know, I, you don't, yeah, I, I'd be a little harsh here, but you don't really see this like pride in ownership you know, I mean, some buildings you see it like people, uh, people here, uh, the younger people get it that like if everyone chips in to make the facade of the building look good, then the overall everyone benefits, right? The apartment looks good from outside the whole building. Like this building here is new, you know, everything looks good and um, benefits everybody. But then you have uh, some of these uh, buildings here. You know, the every neighbor, you know, is just only want to take care of their part, you know, and they don't want to do anything for the for the outside of the building. And that that's like a that's like an old Soviet mentality that, uh, that you know people are trying to deal with here. And it, you know, and you can see, you know, you can see a lot of these uh, buildings here. It, it wouldn't you know, like some of them are really going to need a lot of repair work, like this one here. You know, they put new windows. So it looks like they got a start here, but uh, hopefully after after the war, you know, we keep saying after the war, I would say a change in the war. I don't think the war is ever going to end until Putin dies and everyone around him dies. Uh, unfortunately, it's like the Kim Jong-un thing. We all thought uh, North Korea would collapse after the last one and the sun turned out to be a lot worse. So I think uh, I think that's the reality here. But uh, yeah, this uh, collective ownership mentality, this uh, something you see a lot in Scandinavia that everyone would chip in so that the outside of the building looks good and everyone's apartment value goes up, you know, because the buyer then sees that the outside is good and then understands that all the um, common areas of the building are taken care of, you know, because what good is your apartment if the whole building around you is collapsing, right? You know, um, this is like a nice little, park it seems to be like a big uber pickup spot here and then i don't know uber uber didn't work out too well here bolt is the thing you know if you're using car ride sharing you use uclon or bolt that'll get you uh get you around i'm kind of killing time today my my wife is in some yoga class and uh you know and i always decide to walk around and make some films now this building, they look like they did some collective renovations here. This one looks like they did it a while back, but that balcony needs to be painted. So I think with time, I think I think with time it's happening. And when the prosperity comes here, when all of the investment flows in and people realize this is a great place to live, you know, we're gonna, we're gonna need a massive amount of people to do the work, right? This is hard work. You know, um, redoing a facade of a building, you have to remove all that old stuff with a grinder and, you know, you know, throw on a new coat of paint and everything. It's, it's hard work. And then you have to do preservation. You know, you have to have guys who are highly skilled to preserve all these details so you don't just grind it off. Um, some of it has to be repaired. Yeah. So this is like something hopefully we see a change in the Ukrainian culture becoming more like Europe. You go through downtown Vienna or you can go through Oslo or any place like that in Stockholm, you know, Brussels. Uh, everyone's keeping the facade of the buildings nice, you know, and uh, that, that would be a part of the European culture I would love to see here is this collective ownership mentality and, you know, uh, community thinking. You know, we have it a, a pretty good in our apartment complex because it's all like young, young people who've been abroad. So hopefully if that's the next generation, I'm very hopeful then. I'm, I'm very, I'm very hopeful for this place. Only people objecting to my vision are usually the other foreigners who came here to hide out. They want to keep the cost of living down and they want to kind of keep this place to themselves mentality and don't want to see people around them prosper so that they can maintain their position in life, you know? 
they keep complaining like Lviv is expensive. And I said, well, raise your, you know, get a better job. You know, everyone else in Lviv is getting a better job. You should do it too. So, <laughs> yeah, same sort of thing. Yeah, I'll just show you. This is the McDonald's up here. This is a, this is a major marker in the town. So, this, this is the... I think this is the original McDonald's in Lviv. We have a lot of them now. I mean, there's even one popping up around our house. But uh, this is the, I believe this is the first one. This has been around for a very long time. I think it's even one of the first in all of Ukraine, if I'm not mistaken. I know there's one in Kiev on Kreshatik that was like the, I've eaten at that one long back, back when I was uh, not thinking about my health so much. That was the only place really to hang out and everything a uh, long time ago in Ukraine. That was like uh, the meeting point, you know, way before smartphones and all this. Everyone kind of knew where McDonald's was. So, yeah. Yeah, so this is, uh, this is it. It was shut down for a while and then they reopened. But I would like to see in, in Ukraine, like change, is that they come up with their own something better than something Ukrainian. You know, and something healthy. You know, I would love to see uh, see some franchise uh, selling healthy food. That would be uh, that would be really cool. I'll just go cruise back down this uh, Miroslava Seroka Street. I don't know. I'm butchering the name. You know, my apologies. You know, uh, and everything. Now we have a comedy club. Here, this is now this place is like some bread bakery kind of place hot dogs and you know sandwiches and, and this is a comedy club here cult uh, there's a couple funny people that, you know in the in the facebook groups and everything you know i haven't had a chance to get out i need to start going out more i went out last night i went out uh, last night a little bit and uh, met some foreigners here, you know, some aid workers, you know, mostly they're supporting the Foreign Legion, these particular people, you know, getting them supplies and what have you. Uh, and I told them they should just stay, they should move here, we need to get all the people here we can, you know, so, yeah, yeah, that, that would be, that would be cool. <sighs> just give you a yeah, more of a walking tour of these streets and the parks and everything. Yeah, yeah life, life in Lviv, it's, uh, for me, it's gotten pretty routine. I, I have a schedule and I do things. And, you know, if you're American or European, it's, it's, it's not that hard to live here, really. You know, I mean, there's like some, some things are a little bit more difficult. But I mean, overall, most of the things work and you can buy whatever you need, you can eat. You know, sleeping isn't that difficult. That's the same everywhere, you know, and uh, mostly things are working now. The electricity's in order. We had some stuff up and down, but I think they have power outages. Everyone knows how to live with a power outage. You just have like some backup systems and everything. But uh, mostly it's, it's like living anywhere else. It's just a little bit more rough. You can see the roads and the buildings, whatever, as I was talking about. You know, but uh, it's going to all change, and it's good to be here in the beginning of the change. You know, instead of coming later and having to pay crazy money for it, right? <laughs> so, <laughs> it's, uh, I, I would encourage people to think about moving to Lviv. You know, and uh, get your foot in the door, get on the ground floor of something great, because uh, yeah, it's. Uh, as, as I said, it's it's actually really calm here. One one really good thing about living here is like people are actually really uh, really civil. They nobody's in your face. No one gets into your business. You know, uh, personal safety is not a problem. I've never had a problem with pickpocketers or getting mugged or anything like that or feeling in danger. Like you know, when I walked in Chicago or something on the wrong streets. You know, I was going to the University of Illinois, Chicago, which is like right off of Taylor Street. You know, just south of I-95, so it's like the beginning of the South Side, right? It's on the border, and uh, <laughs> yeah, that, that can get pretty scary. I mean, some of my classmates got robbed and everything, and nothing like that happens here. You don't 
hear much about that. I mean, you hear about like some stolen bicycles or at night people are drunk and getting in trouble. But uh, generally it's uh, it's quite okay here. Well, this, is, uh, this is a nice street here. Uh, this is really nice. Yeah, if old buildings are your thing, there's a lot of a lot of these apartments are for sale, but they're small. They're like 40 square meters, 500 square feet. It's not enough for a family. It's just enough for a, you know for a couple. You know, uh, it's really hard to find the big apartments here. You know, if you find some something family size, I mean, I'm looking for that now. 150 square meters, and it's like uh, it's not much for sale. And then I want you no, know, you want uh, all this other stuff so you you know like i was saying in a previous video these buildings they look interesting but uh they're actually not uh, very comfortable you know they don't have balcony you know the ceilings can be low sometimes you know and then the only the front rooms have light the rest of it's pretty dark inside so you really have to you know you have to really like old buildings see i'm, I'm this this is more my speed this uh the one i showed you earlier this white building this is uh, like where we started the tour this is this is what I'm all about, you know, um, you know to uh, you know new and modern and what have you. Well, okay, this is all I got. You know, um, I hope you enjoyed this uh, street. I'll do more of these street tours and commentary and what have you about life here. It's just, like I said, uh, <laughs> I'm so relaxed. I'm so relaxed, you know, I just never feel like this, you know, until I moved here, you know, uh, it's, uh, life has its challenges here, but, you know, I don't know, it, after a while this place grows on you and you feel really at home here, you know, <laughs> so anyway, take care, bye-bye.